Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the New to Wrestling Podcast. This week, we watched the SummerSlam 1997 edition, Heart and Soul, emanating from... What just from... happened? <laughs> oh, honestly, it was wild. It was a wild time. Uh, but the match card is as follows. In our opener, we have Mankind taking on Hunter Hearst Helmsley in a steel cage. Next, we have Brian Pillman taking on Goldust. If Brian Pillman loses, he will have to wrestle Goldust the following evening in a dress. The Period. Godwins take on the Legion of Doom in their grudge match. The British Bulldog takes on Ken Shamrock for the European Championship. We have an eight-man tag team match between La Los Boricuas and the Disciples of the Apocalypse. Stone Cold Steve Austin challenges Owen Hart for the Intercontinental Championship. And in our main event, it is Bret Hart versus The Undertaker with special guest referee, the Heartbreak Kid himself, Shawn Michaels, for the WWE Championship. discretion is advised hello everybody and welcome this is kelsey she is the new and new to wrestling i am xavier i am not so new and uh yeah we gonna get into it today i'm traumatized we we've been waiting for this one for a little bit i certainly have i know um you know what's coming so uh i knew this was going to be a good one I'm so traumatized. All right, how are you feeling? How are you overall as a whole, the whole pay-per-view? I mean, so much happened. Like, I'm traumatized from the end. And then when you just read back the match card, I was like, oh, there were so many other Things. little traumas that, that <laughs> compounded into somebody just, like, kicking me off the fourth floor of a building. No, 100%. I, I also feel What like just happened? This should just be called, like, the heart the foundation versus the WWF because the like, other than the two um, tag team matches, they every match featured a member of the Hart Foundation versus somebody. Oh yeah, I mean I oh, just and like, the steel cage, but like still like the steel four cage out of the, the like foundation. five members of the Hart Foundation. Yeah, <sighs> I'm just like because so many things happen that were like like what happened with Stone Cold. Mm. That was shocking. Yes, like just so, very much so so many things. And I I am still in a state of shock. I feel like I've I've been, dare I say, like lobotomized by SummerSlam 97. I'm kind of I, just like, I'm fine. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fine. All right. So this one opens up with um the national anthem playing ours, not Brett's. Um as cool. All right. At least it was at the appropriate time in the show and not just random. Yeah. Um, Obviously, we weren't the only people complaining. No, 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 not yeah. at all. They were like, Can we like get through the national anthem like once? Like ours? Like yeah. maybe just once. Again, I swear. No, like not a banger, not trying to listen to it all the time, but like right. At least it was appropriately timed. I'll give yes, one. Yes, 100%. Um, and uh, then we get treated to a, essentially like a black and white promo that is uh, kind of an all-encompassing promo, but especially focuses on the main event uh, between Brett Taker uh, and uh, Shawn Michaels. He's not in the match, but he might as well be. He uh, might as well be. I mean. <laughs> Um, and, and basically it's, it's very much like if life were fair and then it takes us through all these like scenarios of like, uh, if life were fair for like Bret Hart, would he have to, um, feel like a, a country or a nation turned his back on like, like, it was just like, okay. He wouldn't be whatever. like a fallen angel. He wouldn't be the fallen hero. Like people would still mm -hmm. like want to see him and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. Whatever. And then it was like, if life were fair, like the undertaker wouldn't have to deal with all this like extra nonsense from Paul bear. And then my favorite Swear. part was like, if life were fair, would he be betrayed by an unwilling knee in reference For Shawn to Michael. Shawn Michaels, which is just so, 
<laughs> you're just like, okay. I know you were trying to like keep it on theme, like with the, you know, the motif of the promo or whatever we got going on, but like, what? <laughs> An I'll unwilling knee is so funny. Like his knee went on strike and was no, like, fully. no, no, I'm not doing it. Say like he was betrayed by, by like, the injury career or like yeah. by like loving the career that he's in because mm -hmm. his body was injured doing said career like right. there was something else there other than unwilling me which no, is so um, funny i know it it yeah it sounds like uh like somebody like a subject unwilling to like bow to like royalty or something yeah. you know oh, what I yes mean? like on bend the knee very game of thrones <laughs> like and um, the bag, no. no, honestly. So, and it took me out of it because honestly, it was really, really good. And then unwilling me, I was like, I was like, <laughs> no, what? yeah, it really got me. So great. Um, uh, we have our first uh, sign call out of the uh, of this episode. Um, <gasps> while they're playing or like while they're cutting out of the national anthem, or, like before they get into this little promo, <laughs> um, there's just there's a sign and it's so quick. Um, but Kelsey caught it. It just goes Bischoff smells like Turner's ass, <laughs> <laughs> and that was that was so good. cracked me and up. Thank you so much that that played during the national anthem. I, honestly, because I would put my hand over my heart for that no 100 percent. he definitely does he definitely does he definitely to, does to steal a quote from our um eighth grade history uh teacher um bischoff so full of crap his eyes are brown <laughs> oh my god did she say that oh yeah uh she used Work. to say that about um I'm not going to say a name about a student in uh, my class all of the time. A student? All the time. Okay, yeah. you have to tell me who this is later. <laughs> yes, I will 100%. <laughs> but but she would call him out because he would just never do anything. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, typical athlete coaster. Um, pr pretty dumb as like a, you know, uh, as just a baseline um, but he wouldn't do anything and then she'd call him out for it almost every Love. time <laughs> and then she just got so sick Love. of it that she just uh, started telling him he's full of crap <laughs> and i love that about her i hope she is well no, me Always too loved her. no yeah me too me too uh so all right let's get into it because there's a lot to get into so the first match is the steel cage match between triple h with china and mankind mankind's and back I, um yeah yeah, I was going to uh, say, I learned something so useful watching this because I was like, oh, my God, if you're new to wrestling, I was like, wow, they're starting off with a cage match. That's so crazy. And Xavier's like, well, you want to start with like a really big match because like the excitement is up. Like you want to keep everybody up and then you kind of like bring them down. He goes, usually the title belt championship is always at the end. But like you want to start with like a big ticket also. And I was like. I really learn something new here every week, and it's just so inspiring. But because I, yeah, yeah. I was like, my natural inclination, which is why I'm new, mm -hmm. I was like, you would kind of like build it up. But right. he was like, no, no. But it's kind of like a match itself. Like sometimes they come in really hot, and then like it's mm -hmm. in hers, and then so yeah, yeah very there's a lot of a lot of up and down as far as like the emotion goes, and a lot of re wrestlers like mention like even when they're talking about like when they talking about matches. Um, they always say like if you're not on last, you want to go on first. It's just, yeah, it's just it's just like a running thing in like the wrestling business. Um, Love so that. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Apparently, uh, I don't know this for like sure, but I've I've heard there's like this story of like um, Chris Jericho uh, was supposed to have a match against I think Kevin Owens at like a WrestleMania, um, and they apparently like gave them like the snub and put them on second. Um, and yeah, apparently like Chris Jericho took great offense to that because he felt like he the would, match was yeah. more important than second. Um, and I was like, oh, okay. I mean, all right. Fight for your rights. Yeah. I, I'm trying to remember who's, I think it might've been Steve Austin's podcast, the Broken Skull uh, podcast that they were like discussing it. Um, oh, heard. Yeah. So if you ever want to check that out, it's on Peacock. Um, so <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I have a note. Mankind is becoming a fan favorite. Um, My God. You can really, like, it was like, it started with those interviews. It was like getting a taste of Mick Foley. And then as soon as Dude Love happened, it was just like, we're done. We love him. We love. It, you can't we not. love his multiple personality disorder, his mm -hmm. insanity, 
they're even loving the mandible claw which i still can't get past but that's right. okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i love everything else but it's true it worked on me literally they finessed me check the track i used to hate him so bad he used to really gross me out <laughs> and he they literally it's happening in real time i'm like oh my god hey mankind how are you no literally so funny it's, i'm such a turncoat it's horrible no listen that's it's the way it goes that's the and game also you watch wrestling long enough you will have these relationships with all of them i go through phases with all of them where i love and them and then i hate them yeah <laughs> and it really, they really get you because then i get like heartbroken by people i really loved and then they hurt me i'm like right. what? Mm -hmm. why would you do no, that 100 percent. it's because they you. don't know you <laughs> <laughs> They literally don't know who you are. Uh, uh, oh, you just love to serve it up straight, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Only in this instance. So, um, yeah, honestly. So this one, <laughs> Triple H tries to escape immediately. 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 Um, Which uh, I love. I, I love that lo yeah. he just went, forget it. And he no. just went right for He's the like, door. fight? No, flight. <laughs> and period. And I was like, I literally love that he did that. So good. And so oh. on in character. Just mm -hmm. love. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to call out highlights through these matches. I think that's kind of uh, the way we're going to go forward, especially on the podcast. No one's looking to me for like a play-by-play, minute-by-minute of every match. So, highlights of this one. Uh, Mankind does a disgusting pile driver on triple h it was so aggressive and so yeah. fast love to see it um china this cage was literally this cage match was put in place to stop china from interfering it did no such nothing thing. it did it nothing. was like her unwilling like fourth like no, it was the unwilling fourth in the <laughs> No, 100%. She was just like, um, no, it's three on one. I don't know what you thought. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> okay, like, well, me and Cage go way back. And... She said, what, metal bars? Okay, you going to stop me? Okay. I swear. Like, so crazy. <laughs> um, so at one point, she climbs up on the cage. Like, uh, she had taken off her belt, I guess. Word. And just starts choking mankind, like, through the, the cage bars. And you're just like, this woman... That can't be stopped. <laughs> can't cannot be stopped. Be stopped. Um, uh, what? I thought something inappropriate. And I'm not gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair. Um, I was gonna, you can believe this. Is that what I was gonna say? You ever had to take that good? <laughs> <laughs> You're willing to struggle. <laughs> I have. If you haven't, I'm so sorry. I, I no, <laughs> no, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh and that's my... living baby <laughs> and that's life um, <laughs> um mankind at one point goes for an escape uh gets a low blow for his troubles and then gets superplexed from the top of the cage also Ooh. wild really um, crazy uh triple h threw mankind into the steel uh cage like 14 times min oh my god it was crazy like, it was i because i had an original that was just like um uh, Triple H throws mankind into into the steel, and then I my next note was just dot 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 a lot, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> over and over and over again. Uh, yeah, he just and kept coming for it. That steel cage is like very um I don't want to say malleable, but it's a it's a little like yeah. So they when definitely... he was like swinging into it, I'm sorry if you're what not watching, but it was very like like yeah. when he so was if you thrown are... into it, not new it was, to like, breathing. These are um the classic like blue uh bar steel cage matches not what the next iteration which is more of like a like a chain a link box. fence oh it's like a chain link fence yeah um it, and yeah so it changes a little bit um what's never mind uh you'll see it when it comes um yeah. so it, it, that one just looks a bit more uh, brutal and it is more, it is not, what the blue cage is, is eight steel slats that they yes. connect in the center of each of those. Um, yes. But what this one is, is it's essentially one huge cage that is made that they lower onto the, onto the ring instead right. of it being like built around the ring. 
Right. Because I'm thinking, I was going to ask, I was thinking of like, you've shown me this match multiple times and it never gets old, but it's like, I think it's a, oh my God, it's like where, oh God. it's a cage match, but they're like in their own box and then they Elimination get like released. chamber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. No, we're not. Yeah, yeah. That's down the line. That's what I know. That's way down the line. But is that the cage? It's no, it's it, no. that one is like a. That is like an evolution. First, it's like the blue bar cage. Um, and then it's like the chain link fence cage. And then we get Hell in a Cell, um, which is... I'm so scared of Hell in a Cell. Which is like a, just a really big cage. Um, and then we get the Elimination Chamber, which is a whole different beast. Um, yeah. So, love to see it. But we won't see the Elimination Chamber until 2003. Oh, damn. Mm -hmm. I love that match. We've watched it at least. Oh, we've seen a like, few of three them. times. There's yeah. there's lots of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're um, they're one of my faves. Uh, actually, it's probably behind like the I don't know. I uh, I love me a ladder match, and I do love me the elimination chamber, and then the Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble's one, and then the other two. Mm, okay, I love a ladder match too mm -hmm. for sure. Um, uh, I have one that says Triple H is hanging upside down, uh, at one point, uh, like stuck basically. And mankind gives him like a running knee, uh, into the cage. Um, and uh, JR on commentary goes, like, How do you protect yourself? Immediately, Vince goes, You don't. And you're just like, Oh, yep, I oh, guess, okay, I guess that's that that tracks. Hey. Um, yeah, uh, so at one point, uh, Triple H gets stuck in the ropes. Um, and Mankind goes to make an escape, and that is when China slams the door on his head with such no. force that, like, it, the door swung, like, back around, and then the referee, just trying to do his job, is like, hey, bitch, you can't really do that, and she slams his head into the, the ring steps, and for his troubles on the way up, he smacks the door, which is sw on its like swing back. So the referee got an extra hit he wasn't really planning for. That's for sure. He got uh, brained, dude. dude. He got brained. Yeah, absolutely. They both did. But I, but with mankind, it was hard to hard to watch. But also, mm. like, it's mankind. Mm -hmm. But with the ref, I was like, oh, no. yeah, right. Oh, no, no, one hundred percent. It's so terrible. Um, after that, she grabs a chair, throws it to, uh, Hunter at one point, China's like climbing the cage after this point and, uh, mankind essentially shoves Hunter into the cage, knocking China off and love to see it. Absolutely. I mean, you've been getting involved way too much. You got, you got to get yours. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really true. It's really uh, true. Um, he hits Hunter with a double arm DDT onto the steel chair, and then he goes like he's gonna escape. Um, and then he's like, you know what? Never mind. Takes off his mask, decides he's today he's he's Jimmy Snooker, like he's ascended, he's he, he's got, I he's got fans to please and love it. to jump off of. So he uh climbs to the top of the cage rips open his shirt and then does like this crazy elbow drop love to see it um it was great so uh china's like oh shit shit's about to go down so she runs in the ring and is trying to pull triple h's like lifeless dead carcass out of the ring all the while mankind on the opposite side of the ring is climbing over the top uh mankind hits the hits the floor first be coming the winner, escaping the cage. Um, and then he's just kind of like left for dead on like the ground. And we're like, are you good, dude? Ski? It really like, scared me. On? Um, because they they like, just like were on him for a really long time. And normally they'll like, you know, there's lots of camera cuts. WWE Hunter's loves, loves, body. Loves, loves a jump cut. Yeah. So I thought they'd be like all over the place, but they were just like, it was just one still shot of mankind on the ground. And you're like, and he um, was like, dead um and then all of a sudden uh dude loves music starts playing and then like you just you're watching and then his toe starts tapping 
Tina start tapping that toe and, Where? <laughs> and all of a sudden he like gets up and just starts like dancing like dude love and we're like all right love to see it love and there was a guy in the front row dressed as dude love mm. and this was his moment sweetie like he was dressed as dude love and Mick Foley jumps up and he's like dancing as dude love and he starts to exit he notices the guy and gives him like the biggest bear hug mm -hmm. and then like walks out and right. I was like I love that, that man Mm -hmm. That man, he was like, it was all worth it. All of this preparation to no, do fully. love for a summer slam paid mm -hmm. off. And I love that for him. Truly. So crazy. Yeah. I really thought uh um I really thought mankind was dead. I was like really worried because he no, was like, I know. on the you floor and he was like really selling it. And I was like, wait, no, is he like actually injured? Because he got beamed in the skull mm -hmm. in right. that door. And then Still climbed up, did the elbow drop off the top, and then climbed up again. This is what's crazy. He did the elbow drop and then still climbed out of the ring to win before China, who is just brute strength, could drag Triple H out. Mm -hmm. So crazy. And that's the T. And that's I the thing that. about Mick Foley is, like, he is deceptively athletic like people yes like, like it's so true like look at him and you're like it's just a dude it's just a dude that's just a dude bod and you're like okay cool and then he does things and you're like how'd you get over there so fast i swear <laughs> yeah, i don't know like, it's he is so f like freakishly strong and athletic mm -hmm. and just amazing and i loved the little like homage to jimmy snooker because i was like oh my god it's like when that picture of him at the garden watching Jimmy Snuka jump off mm -hmm. and do the elbow drop. And I was like, and he did that. And that was like, it brought the, it brought it full circle. Right. Yeah. No, he, it was, a, it was definitely it. A, uh, like a childhood dream kind of moment for sure. Um, next, the uh, governor of New Jersey is brought out. Uh, essentially, apparently there were no wrestling events in New Jersey the prior eight years um due to some kind of like tax on like i kind of remember them talking about this at the slammies no yeah. remember we were like is undertaker like at a politician's meeting in like undertaker garb like i, I kind guess. of remember yeah. talking yeah and about so this. um they bring out the governor of new jersey because she brought wrestling back to jersey love to see it um Apparently, the headbangers are from Jersey. I have no idea. That's probably why I love them so much. We um, trust them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they come out with uh, uh, the governor and Gorilla Monsoon. And, like, when they said who was coming out with them, I was like, what in the hell? What do these people have in common? I <laughs> like, swear. Like, and weirdest group of people. No, 100%. Um, but as soon as I found out it was because the headbangers were from Jersey, I immediately accepted it because I am easy. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, know, they, I wonder what part of New Jersey. I have to look this up later. They uh, they gift uh, the governor like a, a WWE like replica belt for her contributions and bringing wrestling back to New Jersey. Love to Work. see it. Love to um, see it. Next, we have Gold Dust taking on Brian Pillman. Love to see it. I'm mm -hmm. very excited about this one. Um, I have a, a heinous line from Jerry uh, because while they're kind of going into the the background of this match, they do cut to the crowd and there is Tiger Jeet Singh and his son Tiger <gasps> Ali Singh in the crowd. Um, and uh, Tiger is wearing a um, what what am I what am I thinking of? Why can't I think of the name? I can't think of the name either, but it's uh, it's like a like a turban or a hijab or you know something of, of that nature. And Jerry, being a absolute savage, a scoundrel, goes, "What an ugly hat, girl!" <laughs> Jerry, it's like stop. a <laughs> just yeah. stop. Just I'm stop. gonna go there. Not mm -hmm. even gonna go there. Uh, and then. <laughs> No, literally, it just needs to be stopped. Um, uh, and then they cut to apparently what was uh, just an insane beach party tailgate that they. Why did. don't we do this anymore? I don't know. I'm here for this. I would. I'm saying I they loved that for I no ate reason that up. at all. In East Rutherford, New Jersey, they had a Caribbean beach party in the parking lot for no mm -hmm. reason other than let's turn up before SummerSlam and. Why are we not doing this anymore? Uh, Who stopped honestly. this? I'm honestly. outraged. Uh, they look like a like a damn good time. They, 
Oh, they were having a great time. They were having I don't know. a key, girl. Like, they were having so much fun. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying I'm, to go. Bring it back. Bring, bring back the party back. before the pay-per-view. I'm uh, saying parades, parties, carnival games. Like, what? Uh, where is it? Where mm -hmm. is the funding? Let's go. Uh, so, oh, I have another another heinous line from Jerry. Um, so they go into the the how we got here uh, promo, and there's a lot of Marlena uh, not being afraid to get in there talk. Um, and Jerry uh, just goes, "I've never hit a woman, uh, but the, essentially the vibe was like." I would though, <laughs> like, like and just, for no reason. He no, was, fully... If anyone was curious, I would hit a woman, and we were like, "I was like, first of no all, we know. Second of all, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> second of all, don't tell people that. You, no, like what? You're crazy." And the way he said it was like, "And I haven't even hit my own mother." As right. if like that's like as if everyone's procedure. out here just <laughs> swinging on their moms. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just beating up their, which by the way, my mom's on my shirt today. I, lo oh, but, I love that shirt so much. Um, I was like, he said it as if like, that's like just a rite of passages. You sock your mom in, in the gullet. No, like, and then, and then he was like, and I, so I haven't hit a woman, but I would. Mm. And everyone was like, yeah, like no one asked. And that's mm -hmm. concerning. But, no, absolutely okay. insane. So um, weird. So some highlights of this match: Goldust hits uh, Pillman with a a springboard back elbow, which I just wasn't expecting um, from Goldust. Uh, the thing all. is, like, he's so large that another one that's like deceptively athletic. He's like a yeah. deceptively like nimble for somebody as big as he is, um, because you forget that he is six six. Like that's that is a large, he's very man. huge, yeah. Um, uh, Goldust uh, got a smooch on Brian. Love the head games. Like almost immediately. Yeah. Like it was like within the first three minutes of the match, he would they were macking no, fully. He was like, Rrr. and um, <laughs> Goldust. Uh, or no, sorry. Uh, Pillman at one point is chasing Marlena around the ring like a creep. Um, and Goldust is just laying in wait for for Pillman to just come around the corner, and he hits him with. A, like a decapitation worthy clothesline. Whoa. I was like, ooh, yeah, to, just see Pillman's head flying into like the it first was, row. It was beautiful. It I was, was like, so good. And the original camera angle was from almost like the other side. So you didn't see gold dust either. And suddenly he popped up like a freaking daisy and was just like, bam. Bam. <laughs> Love to see it. I hate this weird, like, and I know it's only going to get worse. So I'm going to not comment on it too much. But this, like, very much like an old timey western where like the villainous guy that's the sheriff's trying to stop is like chasing the saloon girls around where it's like, oh no. Yeah, and and he's like, like, I have a moment to be like predatory towards this unguarded woman. Let me take it. It's so weird. Like, and weird I guess and like, scary, don't like. I don't boo, thumbs down. I don't know. I guess it was like him supposed to be like quote unquote getting a lick back because she like jumped on his back. Right. right. Whatever. But uh, this weird, like, oh no. Right. Like, I was like, you're not um oh god, why can't I think of his name? Hercules, uh Danny DeVito. Um Oh, uh oh my god, Phil. Phil chasing the um the, the, the nymphs. Yes, you're not that. <laughs> no, <it's> <laughs> because those are sure not that. characters. Yeah, <laughs> those are mythical that. creatures. And he was literally like part goat. Right. So about that. Anyway. anyway. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh goldust throws pillman uh from the ropes pillman lands so rough it's meant oh. to be one of those like um one of those kind of like nut shots uh like spots where uh pillman's supposed to straddle the ropes um but i think he missed or yeah. like the timing was off or something he just hits the uh the ring apron so hard it you, was bad. Like, ooh, okay. Ouch. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a note that just says calling Dusty Rhodes old dust is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> because Jerry did that on commentary today. <laughs> Which, I'm not going to lie, it's a little funny. No, it's it's hilarious. It's just old crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so good. Uh, we have like a really weird kind of like botched ending where... They end up oh. like in the ropes, and it looks like 
uh, Pillman's supposed to like roll backwards into like a pin, but they were just kind of like stuck in this like weird, like we were halfway into the move, halfway not. And then Pillman like climbs over to the ropes. And then all of a sudden Marlena just like smacks him with a purse and then Goldust rolls, rolls him, him up. up and pins him. But it just, the, the like 15 seconds before the smack to the, like to the face, you're just like, what? Wait, what's what's happening? I'm lost. I don't yeah, know what how they were supposed to get to the ropes, but they didn't get there. It didn't do that. Because, like, Goldust was outside and, like, jumped in. Mm -hmm. And I think he was supposed to do some sort of, like, mm. something. Yeah, he was supposed to flip over and then pull. Roll, roll up, him up. Yeah, pull Pillman down with him. Um, but I, I don't know Drew. if he just didn't get enough height or what, but like he couldn't he, make it all the way over or didn't grab Pillman in time. So like Pillman was up still. It was it was weird. It was it, weird. Was, it was sloppy. But that I will say that bag hit that purse smack was clean. Mm. She was on target and she gave it her all. No, 100 percent. Because if there is anything we know is that she stands by her man and period. Um, so, oh yeah, Pillman's gonna dress in drag next, uh, next week. Love to see it. Love to see it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, next we are followed, uh, with a tag team match between the Godwins and the Legion of Doom. The Godwins want revenge on the Legion of Doom for the breaking of Henry Godwin's neck. When I... <laughs> oh, this was hilarious. Um, so the Godwins come out, first of all, they're... Like sharing, they're they're ho both holding up like a giant Confederate flag. No, no, no! <laughs> it was so crazy. No, uh, and you know what? Enough with all the flags. No more flags. I don't want to see the maple leaf. I don't want to see the United States flag. I, don't I definitely need to see the don't want to see the, the <laughs> Union definitely... Jack. I don't want to see the Confederate flag. I don't want to see any flags anymore please i'm done <laughs> I'm, not. I'm done no yeah it, uh, that None was a choice can... that was a choice um yeah and again that like conversation has been going on for a billion years yeah. so I, I don't know what else there is to say there's some no some boys from arkansas and that's what they went with um after that, Kelsey goes, if they play Henry Godwin breaking his neck one more time, and the timing of uh, that was like, like someone in the truck was like, oh? <laughs> Fully was just like, here roll you go. It. Roll it, slow-mo, bring it back, love to see it. And you're like, no, yeah. I don't love to see it. I've been seeing it for months. <laughs> I'm being held at gunpoint by this clip. I could, I'm being held at gunpoint by this. I think clip. realistically, I could get like two more people and we could recreate it like <laughs> shot for shot. <laughs> like, like at Honestly, this point, <laughs> I've seen it so many times. I'm literally there. I, I was there. I saw the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I, I was Henry Godwin. I think I. <laughs> 100%. I, I literally could not believe it. I was like, if they play this freaking clip and then they were like, roll it. No, fully, fully, I'm fully, dead. fully. Um, next, we're I'm... treated to a little short, sweet to the point promo from the Legion of Doom. Love. Always. Um, basically, the gist of it is payback is going to be hell um, because the last couple of weeks, the Godwins have been uh, getting the better of the Legion of Doom, um, mostly because they've been in other matches with other people and then the Godwins show up and be menaces. Mm -hmm. So, uh the Legion of Doom comes out uh, as the Legion of Doom does, swinging hot and heavy. Phineas uh, throws a tantrum at how the match started, which I saw. I was like, "Oh, he's cracking! Oh Lord!" Well, and then they they said memory sparked because they were like, "Oh man, what if he gets into the mule kick again?" And I was like, "Oh, no. remember the mule kick? The mule kick God, was crazy. That was the." funniest i don't want to say it was the funniest thing we've ever seen because we've seen a lot of silly goose behaviors but that was wild so, and don't say it like it's a threatening thing jr where he's like hope he doesn't whip out the mule kick i wish he would i wish he would, <laughs> would. at my next party i wish he would whip out the mule kick on the dance floor amen oh that's unbelievable crazy. um uh vince asks uh or not asks talks about hillbilly jim thank you 
Thank you. I never, I don't ever want to thank Vince for anything ever again. Mm -hmm. But I said, I will reluctantly say Vince is asking the real questions here. And that is, where is Hillbilly Jim? Mm -hmm. Where is my boy, Hillbilly Jamantha? Where is he? I'm, no. I'm sick of the games. Tell mm -hmm. me where he is. They're, the boys aren't wearing shirts. They're out here mule kicking and throwing tantrums and doing whatever they're doing. They're bringing out the Confederate flag, Hillbilly Jim. Where are you? <laughs> you you need to rein this in. Wrangle these boys. No, 100%. I'm upset. Um, <laughs> I don't I get a... farm animals anymore. No, nothing. No banjos, no, no farm animals. No banjos. No joy. Um, <laughs> none. Mm -mm. Um, what is this? Henry broke his neck and he said, evil. <laughs> <laughs> immediately, immediately activated the evil button, like no, Buzz Lightyear when they hit the reset. So he just <laughs> yes. Oh my god, that's fantastic. He's like evil. Um, I have All a right. quote from uh I it just says you suck, Phineas, and then I, I attribute it to New Jersey resident. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just somebody in the crowd got on fuck Phineas, shot, and we we're like uh and they took it. It was so good. Um, amazing. That's our kin. For real. Uh they uh the Legion of Doom try and set up Henry for the Doomsday device again, but they get reversed uh, by Phineas jumping in. Uh, they take care of Phineas right quick, and then they perform a spike pile driver on Henry, which is not any better, <laughs> and gets the win from there. Uh, so the Legion of Doom comes out on top. Love to see it. Duh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, next, we have Ken Shamrock taking on the British Bulldog for the European Championship. This is, I think, Bulldog's, like, second defense. I don't know. We don't see a whole lot of the the European Championship being defended. It's more so we true. have uh, the British Bulldog carrying it around. Um, Basically, 100%. Uh, there's a sign uh, in the crowd that says Bulldog. Uh, oh, yeah. Bulldog is full of bullshit. Love it. Love to see it. And that's a simple one that's easy and fun for everybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Love that one. Yeah. Uh, I have an issue. Ken was very in the zone in the beginning of this match. Very impressive. Um, I feel like there's there was like a jump in like... Um, Aptitude or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what happened. Or maybe it was just given the longer format, we got to see kind of more of it. Uh, I loved it. It was great. I thought he really showed out in this. Yeah, um, absolutely. His best, best match to date... I think so far. Correct. 100%. Um, we get an announcement of the next pay-per-view, which is going to be one night only in the UK, uh, where the Bulldog will be taking on Shawn Michaels for the European Championship. Um, they, I mean, I feel like they kind of told on themselves the ending of the match. Uh, well, that's why I was literally... confused. Yeah, because they were literally advertising a European Championship match between the Bulldog and Shawn Michaels before the match started. So, uh, could have waited. <laughs> yeah, I, um, yeah, and they didn't even try to be like, if he still has it. Like, they didn't even try and do that little mm -hmm. Rick Morrell. They were just like, he's going to have it. So, yeah, yeah. They're going to be fine yeah. about it. It was, um, yeah. Uh, still a great so, match, though. Yeah. No, absolutely. Ken was in control for the earlier part of the match, but once the Bulldog could, took control, it was it was all Bulldog for a hot minute. Yeah. Um, he basically like picked him apart. Um, it's very much the like the more experienced wrestler showing that he is the more experienced wrestler, um, mm -hmm. and that's kind of like how the psychology of the match um, plays out for a while. Uh, so at one point, uh, Ken is on the outside and so the can of dog food that is the stipulation of this match if bulldog loses he has to eat the dog food immediately following the match is sitting on the commentary desk open just open with like a fork in it um it has like a big shovel right or something yeah and you're like um crazy um so that's just chilling on the on the the commentary table bulldog grabs it of course he does um slaps Ken just like right in the side of the head with it and something in Ken snapped absolutely snapped he's that man saw red he took that can of dog food and tried to bludgeon the bulldog to death with it he, and it was like like he like 
I literally said, what did I say? Ken really snapped and, oh, and beamed the, <laughs> beamed the bulldog in the back of the head with a can of dog food. So crazy. So, like, I, he went for it. I was like, oh, okay. okay. No, he really, like, hit him with it. Like, it wasn't just a, ah, it was like, no. like, he was trying to see what his mm-hmm. brain looked like. Yeah, Ken knocks over the ref and then absolutely chokes out the bulldog chokes him out for like 45 seconds the man like long time long time long time uh would not let go bulldogs turning like bright red and then like purple and so then the all of the uh officials from the backs are coming out now as long with like a bajillion referees and at one point they're like trying to get ken off of bulldog and then i guess when uh ken's had enough he like lets go and he's like don't touch me and like freaks out and like all the p all the officials like back up and then all of a sudden he starts belly to belly suplexing Everybody in sight. Pat Patterson take one. Like half the referees take one. Like it is a mess. And you're like, the man has snapped. And I kind of love it. Not gonna loved. Lie. I love so this. He, he said, "Get out of my way." Oh yeah. He was like, "Get out of my way." And I was like, "You would think because we found out he was from like Sacramento." I totally forgot it. We probably mm. already knew this, but I forgot. Just boop. And I was like, "You would think he was from New York." Like, get out of my way. I'm walking here, but. Mm-hmm. I uh, dare I say, and I'm new to wrestling, he like really, he, if he didn't get over, he got way up because the crowd went ballistic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ballistic. They were chanting Shamrock. Yeah. Shamrock. You Sham- can- like they were freaking out. I was freaking out. It was amazing. I yeah. loved this. This mm-hmm. this is better than knuckle up time. And what did Jerry JR say? Hey, oh, it's he beyond goes, knuckle up time. Way past knuckle up time. Um, and we were like, don't no bring that shit. don't bring that up here please no i was like no we're past that now this past man's over that. that's crazy um now yeah, we're doing it, feral anger management problems i feel like this is one of those things where like they kind of like stumbled into something that is like uh that will be kind of more ken shamrock's like niche this like dude who like snaps and goes like on people is more the Ken Shamrock I remember. And I think they and that's kind of what found I want. it here, um, that's what I which want. is pretty cool. Um, next, we get a little backstage interview with uh, Shawn Michaels. And of course, he's asked about his impartiality and uh, whether he'll be able to maintain that. Um, and basically, in the most Shawn Michaels way possible, he's like, I'm going to call it right down the middle. <laughs> um but, you know, he's Shawn Michaels about it. So there's lots of flair and drama. And he says mm. it in a way that makes you believe that he's not going to call it down the middle. <laughs> right. <all>. Of course. <laughs> it's really he always says in a way that's like so genuine and convincing and somehow so ambiguous. And like, what did he just say? No, fully. I don't know what I believe. Somehow mm-hmm. he does both. It's like so sincere and genuine. And then I'm also like, wait, what? Right. I don't know if I believe you. It's so mm-hmm. crazy. He has such a gift. Fully. Next, we have our eight-man tag grudge match between Los Boricuas and the Disciples of the Apocalypse. Did you have a Did you have a alternate title for them today? Oh, oh my God, I did, but I don't know if I wrote it down. Oh, it's I okay. was thinking about it. Oh <laughs> wait, oh it was it was like um something about dandruff, dandruff on alpacas, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> That's I fun. was really thinking about it. And then I was like, is this big getting old? And I probably didn't write it down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I live for it. Okay, um, great. Dandruff on alpacas. That's the one. So I might have used alpacas before, but definitely not dandruff. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely haven't checked that one off the list. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Los Puricos come out in, their, in a little matching uh, Puerto Rico shirts. Love to see it. Much um, if better there's anything than... I know about Puerto Ricans is there is usually some kind of Puerto Rican paraphernalia strapped to them or their like most prized possessions or the car Uh, yeah fully flag Um, in the car i'm like the weird exception to that i swear to god um because i get like i'm like the outlier like puerto ricans get in my car and they're like 
Where is Broad. it? <laughs> no. Broad. I feel like you have to have a thing where you like open your glove box and it starts playing like a like the Puerto Rican anthem or something. Yeah, like it's, it, no, it's actually just the sound of like cookie frogs. Just <laughs> <laughs> I actually have four hundred cookie frogs living in my glove compartment. That's <laughs> that's all it is. That would be really like commitment i love honestly that. um because frogs are disease ridden jesse <laughs> <laughs> ew and this is <laughs> uh, i can't so uh another crowd sign uh it just says nice ass crush <laughs> and you know what nope, you're wrong up. actually but that's okay <laughs> no fully there is not a member of the doa that isn't flat that didn't lmao because we <laughs> talked about this we didn't talk about it on the episode but we talked about it amongst ourselves what we were watching last week we were like hmm because it was he was it nod in there with them mm-hmm. and we were like the just the no, dispa- the ass disparity is <laughs> so crazy it's truly astounding 100 <laughs> percent um it's, it's honestly a crime it looked, it was. It looked like the NOG stole the DOA's ass. Like, just took yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> one <laughs> was a pie chart, and the other one was just, like, a graph. Like, <laughs> 100, like one was just a line con- graph. concave, guys. Borderline concave. <laughs> <Let's> just... <laughs> so, like, let's not lie. I love the idea of it, but, like, no, I was let, like... Let's objectify these men. Yeah, sure. But, like... <laughs> but like, I'm uh... not trying to yuck your yum. I'm just saying I don't think... You're seeing everybody else. Like, I think you have to look again. No, 100%. Because but there's that's... quite there's quite a, what? Quite a <laughs> roster of derrieres to get through before you're, like, crush. <laughs> you know 100%. I mean? And respectfully. Respectfully. Mm-hmm. But... Um, okay. <laughs> I love... Uh, I love, and by love, I mean hate, that the DOA came in on motorcycles, did a lap, r- drive back up the ramp, park their vehicles and then decide that they're like there's like there's haste and you're like you could have already been you you could have just ran in you didn't that really pissed me off i was like you're joking we we gotta do a lap at just for them to like look like they're leaving to go park yeah they like pulled them all the way back by the door or if, you're that... gonna, if, if y'all are all are insistent on coming out in the bikes, why don't you just come out on the bike and park? Oh, you know what I mean? No, we have to do a cute little like show dog run, like the the you know best no, in show after thank- the Thanksgiving Day parade. These are <laughs> seven feet tall men clad in leather from head to toe. Not cute. Not no, no best in show. No best in show. Worst in show. <laughs> i'm getting that uh, little water gun yeah um because then yeah they ran in like suddenly we had mm-hmm. we had no time left to lose and i was like i just and again the the first time the bikes came out loved it love the idea of it it's the the car with the bikes funny love this is too much now i'm right i'm it's, sick yeah the bit's old um i have a note that basically just a... chains was kind of like the mvp of this match Ch- for me Chains, I, who was basically just Crush's body double. No, 100%. 100%. Like, and if I didn't know any better, I'd say he was in a wig. But I, it, who it knows? gave a little wiggetry. <laughs> it gave a little wiggetry. It gave, a little, it gave some, <laughs> some wigonomics, if you will. He, 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 is, he practices in the art of wiggetry. <laughs> he dabbles. Wiggonomics. The study of... <laughs> It's first grade, Xavier. Oh. But because the way he had that bandana plastered down and like the hair, I was like, is he hiding the hairline? Or is the he, track. But there's no, yes, but there's no way. Like, there's no way. But I was like, it basically looks like Crush, but in a in a wig. Like, I don't right. know. It was. Right, right. It's, it's like Crush, tw- but like Helvetica. Like, that's all it was. <laughs> <It's> his, <laughs> swear to God. It's his, it's his stunt double. No, yeah, so, so weird, so crazy. Yeah, but he was just like all over the place. He did these like elbow drops that were like essentially like machine elbow drops. Like they were so fast. He was just like elbow drop, elbow drop, elbow drop. And you're like, where did I've never seen you before? What is never, this? never? Um, he heard us talking about ch- chains with a Z, and he mm-hmm. said, "I'll show you." 
Jerry had a funny. He said, uh, "Crush's family <gasps> portrait is a courtroom sketch." <laughs> I thought that was great. <laughs> I was like, uh, "You know what? Well played, sir." It was uh, so good. Mm -hmm. And then the nation comes down to uh, get a closer look, um, and they come out. They come down through the crowd, and basically the entire time they're coming down from the crowd, everyone's just like. The nation of domination are just like equal opportunity assholes. They hate everyone equally. Um, they do not discriminate based on anything other than their hate. And you're like, oh, okay, same. And I, I respect that. that. <laughs> I respect it. I was like, no, yeah, same. I also let that hate fire fuel me. Um, so where am I going with this? Oh, uh, Ahmed Johnson with the choker, still crazy. Um, oh my God, the caller. <laughs> and he had it, and I don't know if it... In unintentionally got like put off to like a jaunty side like Ahmed mm -hmm. was on the side this time no 100 or if he did that as a fashion choice but either way no <laughs> <laughs> why are you wearing a dog collar I don't know it's so and with just Ahmed right in get, case we forget get a like I don't know a hat mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A, a shirt yeah a no. necklace oh a necklace with the nameplate we love to see it love, love. that that's that. also very 90s All do that the all the girlies are doing it. Mm. You better do it too. But the dog collar is crazy. Uh, it's the casual <laughs> like usage is what's crazy. Um, yeah. So throughout the match, at one point, Chains is on the outside, uh, kind of gets in Ahmed Johnson's face, hits him, and then gets a Pearl River plunge for his troubles. Savio Vega takes advantage of that situation. Um and picks up the victory because he's like, hello. I was like, he just got got on the outside. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Um, and then after all the factions are feuding as they have been. But I kind of love that, like, the Boricos was just kind of like slipped out and like left. Yeah, they were like. No, yeah, like Bye. it's like um in the Lord of the Rings when Frodo and Sam start the fight with the orcs and then like dip. <gasps> yeah, it, and then they're it, like it felt very that. <laughs> looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. No, literally. Legit my favorite quote of Lord of the Rings, whatever. Uh, so good. Mine is um is Gollum uh when he's yelling at uh Sam for like cooking the fish or whatever, uh, or cooking the, oh. the conies, and he's talking about like um, I don't know. He said, "Give it to us raw and wriggling." And I, <laughs> and something about and you're that like line. relatable. <laughs> no, fully. I'm pretty sure there was like a Snapchat like uh memory uh that literally is just a recording of that clip on like a blurry TV, and it just like the caption I put is just same. <laughs> Gollum is so hashtag relatable. <laughs> <laughs> and the way he says it, I remember he's like and wriggling. Yeah, like, he no, says it really like it, yeah, it comes from a guttural place. It, it, it comes is, from deep it, within. Yeah, it is a need at that point. <laughs> it's beyond desire. No, yeah, put it on the hierarchy. So <laughs> <laughs> on the hierarchy of needs. Um, amen. All right. This this feud I'm kind of getting I'm kind of getting over I don't because realistically the beef is between Savio Crush and Baruch. Baruch um all of these extra people it's just getting confusing it is it is because they also this is another clip that we keep getting shown over and over again is Farouk firing Savio 100%. Crush and I'm like. Although I do love to hear the line like "crush, go jump on the unemployment line," like mm. you're fired. Or take That's your kinda... place in the unemployment. Take line. Take your place in the unemployment line is mm -hmm. like doesn't get old for me. He said, "Pick but... a number like it's a delicatessen." Just swear. Oh, not delicatessen. Not her full Christian name. <laughs> delicatessen. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> not her full Christian so name. Special. <laughs> <laughs> like he's a number in the delicatessen i was like the who <laughs> uh, i'm like sweating from laughing i know so am i oh my god oh uh, amazing the delicatessen no I swear but the beef the beef is um we have to turn it into like a stew at this point because it's getting old like 
we I need something like I like, just need better reasons like I understand like you got fired and that's sad that's hurtful I get it but like mm -hmm. I need better reasons for you guys to be f it's on site no matter what like right mm -hmm. I need something else right and I it, yeah I, I don't know I just kind of like don't have that much of a vested interest in any one member of any of these groups really I mean I like the nation of domination I think they're fun yeah um, me too but the other ones, it's like I don't really like. I like Savi, but I'm not like waiting. I'm on not Boone hanging to... my yeah yeah. I'm, I'm not, not hanging I'm my like, hat on him. Right. So you know we do what we do. So we'll see where that goes. I I don't think it's over. So I I pretty sure we will be subjected to more of it. Uh, but this takes us into our next match, which is wild this one is a kind of a very important match as far as wrestling history goes because it really changes the traje trajectory of like the next like couple months uh I, i'm sure it does so My this God. is the uh intercontinental championship match between stone cold steve austin and owen hart and this match was so good like oh my god so good amazing up until Stone Cold gets his neck broken. Uh, for those of you who are not new to wrestling, you know this. You know um, this match is infamous for this event that took place. So I did not know this. Yeah. Um, I Yeah, there's some things I try and shield you from. I know Vince McMahon documentary uh, gave away a lot. but Yeah, it's it so funny, too, because I just started watching... Which I try to avoid, but, like, obviously Stone Cold has the Broken Skulls um, podcast. Undertaker has his. And, like, I've been watching episodes and clips, like, here and there mm -hmm. without trying to get, like, too many spoilers. And that ha hasn't come up yet. So, like, mm -hmm. I even though you were, like, he talks about it all the time. I'm, like, it is pure coincidence that, you that I haven't seen, seen an episode where he's talked about it. Because... I knew it might have been coming by your reaction. Like when Owen put him in the pile driver and I always look like where their head is because the pile driver always makes me nervous. And you went like, oh, oh like you reacted. And then I was like, what? what? And then I, I, it, was I, like, I just hadn't seen it in so long that yeah. I was just like, oh, God, that is brutal. Like, that's so brutal. It was because, really. Yeah. Stone Cold's head is like sticking out from underneath Owen's legs by like like a half lot. of his head like it it was he was crowning rough it... yeah fully fully <laughs> <laughs> um i'm so let's... sorry i should not joke about that because he was literally seriously injured but i it almost like i'm glad you reacted because it almost like prepared me because i was like oh, i god. like braced mm -hmm. and yeah oh my god horrible yeah so, so we, scary um let's yeah we'll we'll back up a little bit so we um, we get like a recap as to how like we got here. Um, we go back all the way to Canadian Stampede in that five on five Canada versus America match where Owen Hart uh, was the one to pin Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, to pick up the victory for Team Hart Foundation slash Canada. Um, so that recap was so weird because it was just, yes. just kept they had like literally two lines from owen and then like that they just kept repeating and like cutting back to over and over again it was like i was the man to beat stone cold and then and they would play like some other segment of their history and then they cut back to owen i was the man to beat stone cold and you're like are you broken like what's what's happening i swear <laughs> uh, i said it was like a politician's commercial where they're like mm. the like Say I was running against you and, like, I paid a kill clip of si saying you were going to lower taxes. Mm. But then in between that, I was posting all the times you've raised taxes. Yes. Like, and so they yes. it's just you repeating, like, I'm the one that lowered taxes. And it's like, actually, like. Right. Oh, and my just, God. It's and... you saying that over. Because it was all, like, Stone Cold, like, beating people up in between. Mm hmm and yeah, like it, saying he he got his shoulders on the mat, but it actually took, like, 18 people to subdue him with the handcuffs right. and the whatever. I don't know. Yeah. It was it was odd. And and it's uh what we I'm sorry, what were you just saying? Uh I missed raising taxes, lowering taxes. Oh what? yeah, it's funny that you say like it was a um like a politician commercial because um we are in obviously election season and yes. uh prior to this I have spent all of my life in a very not swing state. 
So when I tell you the Oh. ads that I get from both sides are so crazy and out of pocket and absolutely incessant that like you were like, it sounds like a politician's commercial. I was like, oh, it fully does. It the, Yeah. like the 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 background music, the cuts. I was like, oh wow. You like half expected to be like this message was approved uh, by Yeah. Oh like yeah. the Heart Foundation. Um Like I yeah, I am the Heart or whatever. I'm the Heart Foundation. I approve this message. But yeah, really Yeah. it gave very that. Mm hmm mm hmm So we get into uh, uh another little backstage moment where Michael Cole was trying to like chase down Stone Cold for like a uh just a comment or something. It literally immediately he goes, Oh, Stone Cold, Stone like he's like chasing him down, like chasing him like a like a little kid. He's like, Stone Cold, Stone Cold, like I I need to get a word from you. And uh Stone Cold just immediately turns like I don't I ain't got a word for you, <laughs> and you're like oh, and then uh, Michael Cole being Michael Cole is insistent on continuing this line of questioning, uh, basically being like, are you like prepared to like possibly have to like kiss Owen's Alec butt in front of like. Uh, thousands of people like in attendance and millions of people watching at home. He's like, you might have to start getting ready to kiss my butt if you keep this up. And you're like, oh, shut Michael Cole up right quick. Love to see it. I love um, we are about to enter the era that is bully Michael Cole um, for all that he is worth. <laughs> and I can't wait. Oh, no. <laughs> Poor The Rock Michael. is the biggest perpetrator of it. So Mm. um I love to see it. Um, That makes sense. It, it, he ends up fine. He's now like the voice of the WWE. He's he's got He's all he, right. yeah he he's doing okay. Um, uh, Owen attacks from behind and goes for the knee like immediately, um, and then starts to let that on slot. Uh, oh, Owen gets a, a slammed sternum first in the corner. I only made note because it was so hard. Like Ugh. it just sounded so aggressive. Yeah. Um, And then uh, Stone Cold starts slamming Owen by his hair, which I thought was just hilarious because Owen has, like, maybe three strands of hair left. Yeah. And he's just, like, trying to – he's picking Like, him up he's by the hair and throwing him. he's trying to put, like, a top sheet on. He's going, like, No, <laughs> fully. like, 100%. You're never going to get it, baby. it Um, you're never going to get it. um it's never going to lay flat. That quarter will never bounce. Um, Nope. So, <laughs> um, Jerry on commentary, we – That man, We need to talk about Bruno. J Jerry, the way you wanted to see Stone Cold get all up in Owen's ass, this entire match literally was crazy. Like, he literally sounded like a teenager in heat. That was crazy. I was crazy like, what? I was like, what? Is you, like, he wouldn't let it go. At one point, he's like, um... he might French kiss his butt and you're like, uh, and then JR was like like just out of pocket what fully everyone was was like, like um, and then like JR fully like poses the question. He's like, so you want to see a grown man kiss another grown man's ass? And JR, he's just like, he like plays it off. He's like, I want to see Stone Cold eat his words. And you're like, sure. You want to see then. him eat Mm. something. Clearly. I don't know about his words. Uh, the way But it was... he just kept going back to it. And I was like, Jerry, he's not going to toss his salad on live TV. Get a grip. Yeah, like, you Get gotta a grip. get a grip. Seriously. And it was, like, to the point where I was like, am I crazy? Or is he talking about this a lot? Like, A lot. he, like and A I know lot. that he's, like, that's the stipulation of the match. But we didn't go into the dog food this much. No. Like, we Or didn't the even dress go into this Brett, much. the dress. We didn't even go into Bret Hart have, never wrestling in the United States ever again this much. But we Right. have to talk about the ass this much. No, fully. It was his favorite thing. I was like, these are a few of his favorite things. <laughs> and I was like, don't get me wrong. I was like, I have a note over here that just says Owen is a babe. Like, and so like, if anybody wants to see that, it, me, I get it. But Jerry, we're on the same you have side. a job to do. So What is this? Like, like you're, we're on the you're same on side. the clock. You're horny on main. You need to get a grip. <laughs> like, like, you need help. <laughs> like, I get it. I'm just wondering why you're standing over here with us. No, one hundred percent. I fully believed you were <laughs> over there. I didn't. yeah, I didn't. I didn't know you were going to sit with, with us, which is, like, it's not bad. I just, I didn't, I wasn't I, expecting it. yeah, but, I wasn't expecting it. Um, all right. look, uh, this match is fantastic. Lots of back and forth. Owen is, of course, um, 
the ever bratty little brother uh uh, and it just comes so naturally. The youngest of 12, you have to. Um, oh, so... you gotta fight for your right. <laughs> yeah, no, literally. <laughs> um, uh, Owen, at one point, is over it and, like, tries to leave. And Stone Cold's like, ah, about that. Uh, grabs mm-hmm. him and chases him back. He's like, I'm not going to kiss no ass based on a count out. A disqualification. Yeah, He's no. Like, a, that's... He kiss an ass on a technicality. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and he literally goes like this, like points to his like fake watch, like not on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he was like, get your ass back here. Swear. Um, I I just have a, a note that's just like, uh, I'll break his finger. Owen just being an absolute menace. Yeah. I'll break uh, his fingers. Oh, so, so funny. Uh, I have so many notes from Jerry just being like, I want to see some kissing. Um, <laughs> Uh, at one point, Owen's got uh, Stone Cold in the camel clutch. Love to see it. Um, and then we get we finally get to the moment. There's a, like a back and forth exchange, um, like a reversal. And uh, Owen ends up with Stone Cold in the pile driver position. We, t- we talked about this at the beginning. Stone Cold's head was way too low. Pile drive drivers him, thus breaking Stone Cold's neck in the process. Um, Stone Cold then rolls Owen up in what is the ugliest roll up in wrestling history. Again, not his fault. Clearly, was... a broken neck. Yeah, not, uh, no. I was shocked he even did that. No, yeah, though fully. Um, so rolls up. Uh, Owen gets the pin, and Steve Austin is now the Intercontinental Champion. Um, but who knows where that's gonna go because currently he has two titles now that have to get dealt with and a broken neck. Yeah, I cannot believe that happened. And also, this is the hottest he's ever been in his career. I know, I can't believe this. Yeah, I can't believe I didn't know about this Mm -hmm. because I've really been like testing my limits recently. Mm -hmm. This is crazy. Um, this injury like shortens stone cold's career like significantly um he retires in like 2003 yeah 2003 um which in the grand scheme he was a pretty a pretty young man for retiring um now i mean undertaker wrestled well into his 50s sting wrestled well into his 60s um Randy Orton's like 45 and still trucking. Like, so he retired relatively early due to um, one, he has a lot of knee injuries, as we can see by the braces. Uh, They just keep getting larger. Um, And to this uh, neck injury uh, and, you know, injuries down the line kind of compounded and kind of shortened his career a bit. Wow. And it's interesting because on his episode with The Undertaker, he says, like, you know, you because this was in 2019, um, I think. Yes. In November of 2019. And like Undertaker was like coming up on retiring. Yeah. It was and, probably when the last ride documentary was coming out, which yes. is like a five part documentary series on the end of the Undertaker's career. Right. And he Stone Cold said, like, I mean, you literally wrestled for 30 years. And sometimes I uh feel like if I had taken better care of my body, I could have done the same. Like, Mm -hmm. sometimes I regret that I didn't take as good of care of myself as I should have. And, like, they kind of, like, debate about that because Undertaker's like, I don't think, I think it was other factors. But I didn't really know, like, Mm -hmm. this. Like, I didn't know exactly what they were talking about. But I was like, I just think that's really interesting now that you say that, that it, like, really shortened his career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. We will see how they incorporate Stone Cold uh, into the show without actually wrestling because clearly he cannot. Um, And he's too hot to not have on. So I like that is um, now it's really hitting me. I I was in such a state of shock. I like that is really that is so sad. Mm -hmm. Like he is like the hottest he's ever been right now. Yeah. And like. Yeah, that must have just been a very frustrating time in, like, his career. Um, and he because, didn't even want to do the move, you said. Yeah. Um, there's, like, uh, the I'm story sure behind it know, is, but... like, um, Steve didn't want to take the pile driver, um, that, like, the sitting pile driver. He wanted Owen to do a the kneeling version, similar to the tombstone that Undertaker does. Um, Owen 
essentially tells Austin that he's more comfortable doing the other way because that's what he generally does. And he's it's never been a problem up until this. Um, and Bret Hart kind of uh, or Steve goes to Bret uh, because he trusts Bret and, you know, Steve and Bret have a really good relationship uh, work wise and outside of. So um, and of course, Bret's going to vouch for his brother um, because up until this point, like Owen has had a pretty stellar like yeah. history um so i don't think brett did anything you know like wrong wrong um I, it was just a really unfortunate accident um oh, so Horrible. yeah and it, it's not like not like funny but it's um everyone always talks about like owen like in reverence because of the way that he went or whatever but there's always like a little there and like Steve Austin speaks about him like respectfully it's never that but there's always like a little like you broke my neck <laughs> uh, an asterisk yeah yeah so so the mother who broke my neck right you know um so you know but uh wow. it'll be interesting to see how we get uh I think we're gonna get a lot more um we're going to see the storylines side of the WWE start kicking off, especially mm. because now one of their main characters is, has to be just storylines. Uh, so will they either have to get good, better at it or not use him. So it's going to be good to see them get better at it. Yeah, um, that's true. Oh, so. at least I know he's like fine. Now. Yeah, yeah, he comes back. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we also get, um, like Shawn Michaels is back in full swing. Uh, so there's there's this stuff coming up that we give and take, give and to. take. Um, so this takes us to our main event, and boy, was this one wild. Um. This yeah. was great. We get a recap, uh, essentially a different uh, how we got here promo than the beginning one. Um, Brett versus Taker. Um, love to see it. It just basically sets everything up. Don't need to get yeah. into all of the nitty gritty again. Um, Hitman comes out, grabs the mic, makes everybody listen to the, uh, the Canadian National Anthem. As per usual, this time he yeah. dedicates this match to the Canadian fans. Um, uh, yeah. And then Shawn Michaels comes out. I have a note that just says, Kelsey doesn't like his fit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I literally wrote, Shawn Michaels in pants is not what I signed up for and put a frowny face. Because so where is the Ken Shamrock referee special with the tidy tight shorts? If, and you and think if anybody top. was going to do that, it was going to be Sean, right? I'm saying, although I loved his joggers and I want a pair of joggers like that, but mm -hmm. yeah, he was wearing like joggers and motorcycle boots. I was like, the, I was yeah. like, what? It's yeah. Sean Michaels. It's Heartbreak Kid. I like. I know that you're going to be. Like, I was expecting at least, like, bedazzle the ref top, like, something. something. Like, mm -hmm. he didn't even come out in an earring. He took it so serious. So serious. He was so on his serious. and Q's today. I know. Um, he still had a crazy entrance as if he was fully. wrestling. I literally wrote, his entrance is so extra and he's not even wrestling. But And and then there was a note that said, uh, now all the, uh, the other referees are going to request pyro for their entrance. Uh, yeah. And then Jerry goes, Earl Hebner would look good in front of a Roman candle. And period. <laughs> And, like, and you know period. What? Pop off, pop off. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I just have another that says Undertaker's entrance is so baller. Always has Every been, time. always will be. Duh. Love to see it. Um Sean's like really a good referee, which is crazy. I said that. I said uh, honestly, Sean Michaels is killing it as a as a ref. Uh-huh. Um, and also, you know, his part of his career is on the line so he kind of has to be has um to which be. is that stipulation um right. oh before i get into it for those of you who didn't know just listening if bret hart doesn't win this match he will no longer be able to compete in the united states undertaker is the champion obviously if he loses the match he loses the title Shawn michaels special guest referee um moving on bret hart attacks taker with the title before the bell even rings, uh, Sean tries to, like, separate the two, gets the match started. Um, Sean tries to call it down the middle. He's really on top of everybody. Like, he's he on Brett. It. His counts, pin-wise, were the same for both. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
And he was getting in both of their faces when they were acting a fool. So love to see it. Um, mm -hmm. Paul Bear comes down to the ring at one point in the match because, you know, we got other storylines. We got to keep going. Um, he comes down, doesn't really do anything except just be there, which is, uh, is enough, I guess. I was just going to say is enough because I was outraged. I was freaking out. I was like, no, get literally. Out. Get no, out. <laughs> no, literally. She sees Paul Bear and she's like, no. no. I'm so sorry. I feel so bad for Xavier who watches me because I am not quiet. Like, I'll be like, if I don't like someone, I'll be like, what is he doing here? Don't tell me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll be like, why? And I'll be like, but don't tell me. It's okay. Like, right, right. Because we're gonna see it. <laughs> like, I literally said at one point, I was like, "But what's gonna happen?" Like when sh when uh Stone Cold like broke his neck, I was like, "Well, what are they gonna do?" And I was like, "It's okay. I'm it's I'm gonna watch it." But I just right, right, I have right. to say something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when Paul Bear came out, I was like, "No, no, get out!" And then mm -hmm. I was like, "Sorry." <laughs> I love it. Um, uh, the Undertaker spots him, and at one point, like Dex, uh, Brett, and then goes right outside for Paul. Goes right outside for Paul and finally gets some hands on him. Love to see Amen. it. Amen. Um, and then uh, Paul gets ejected by Sean. Uh, Sean's like, get your fat ass out of here. And you're <laughs> I like, literally he's, well, he said big ass. There you go. He said but, get to, because Undertaker beans him and he roll rolly polies. And I I heard Sean Michaels, or at least I thought I did, go, get, get you, get your big ass out of here. And I was like, did he did Sean yeah. Michaels? Mm -hmm. And Xavier just goes, Yes, he did. And I was like, this <laughs> yes, is the best referee I've ever seen in my whole life. So funny. Um, we start to see the animosity grow on the part of Brett. He starts getting in Sean's face uh, for Sean being a referee, essentially. Yeah. Um, and Owen and Pillman come down to the ringside, get a closer look. Um, the match continues, uh, and Taker essentially does the same thing. As soon as he gets Brett down in a position where he's like, I can go take care of this, Co goes out. Like, I love the, um, the like backwards drop out of the ring love. that he does. Love. So hot. Because he, so... he like flips behind, like flips, puts one hand on the ring apron and just is upright because he's Ooh. so Freaking Paul. Yeah. He was like, that's amazing. Love to see and it. And I, I love that he was like, I think JR said it. He's like, he's taking care of a problem before it exists. Like he's mm -hmm. taking out Pillman mm -hmm. um, and uh, before there's right. even a problem. Um, So he goes out to take care of them. HBK goes out there as the referee to eject them. So he's out making sure um, that they're like, uh, actually leaving um takers piss the match continues um and then at one point there's another altercation between sean and brett and he like goes to brett and he's like my patience is wearing thin like i will disqualify you mm -hmm. <laughs> um and and you can kind of see like there's like a moment like brett sells it where he's like uh, okay like and like actually goes and like takes taker like in the ring and he's like it's i so really good. can't like test this too much you know what i mean like he wants to because it's sean and he hates him yes. but at the same time it's like he is the referee so like he has the final decision in this uh, match um so he kind of just has to like deal with it um so <laughs> uh Bret Hart uh gives the New Jersey crowd a double finger before hitting Taker with the patented second uh rope elbow drop. Um I have a note that says choke oh the choke slam from the outside into the ring. Crazy. Girl. Crazy. What? Mm-hmm. And then so crazy. that superplex that Brett does on the Undertaker. Also insane. I, I was going also insane. No. No. Mm -hmm. No. Um nuts. At uh, one point, Brett has The Undertaker in the sharpshooter, like, around the ring post. Um, mm -hmm. So crazy. And Brett, uh, essentially, like, getting out of that move, lands on top of Shawn Michaels. Mm -hmm. um, so then, while Shawn Michaels is, like, recuperating in the corner, um, Brett grabs a steel chair brains the undertaker with it throws it aside and like goes to continue the match he like calls over to sean to like get in the ring to to pin or to count the pin and the undertaker kicks out um so the match continues and sean in the corner of his eye sees the chair just laying in the corner Leaving and he's like wait evidence. a minute so he grabs the chair and is trying to like confront brett about it he's like 
hello like did you use this and like blah blah blah. yeah um and then they get they they start getting into it and then there's this very like visual like kind of like pause brett literally you can see his mouth he just goes fuck you spits in sean's face like the biggest fattest dirtiest loogie you could ever it was ever see gross um spits in his face sean understandably upset takes the chair that's in his hands goes to swing at brett brett ducks at the last second he brains the undertaker with it and then sean is forced to count the pin because he has to or he has repercussions so it's there's there's just this moment where Sean and Brett are like making eye contact while Sean's like counting and he doesn't want to do it and he has to and he counts the three and immediately leaves. He's so pissed. He's like, damn it. Like and like you can just it's written all over his face and like it, it happened so quick that like the crowd's just like what and they didn't even play like Brett's music immediately because it was so like confusing um so Sean dips takers pissed starts like death walking to the back to go find Sean and then that leaves Brett as our new WWE champion and the Hart Foundation comes out to celebrate with him and that's where we are. That's, uh, yeah. How are you feeling? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that was so crazy. I just, I literally was like, uh, how do I explain this? I don't even know how to explain this. But basically, like, when Brett spit in Shawn Michaels' face, I was like, it's all over. Like, Brett's going to get disqualified. He's never going to wrestle in the United States again. Like, blah, blah. I had no idea how this was going to go. And then when Shawn Michaels swung that chair, I was like, no, 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 no. Because I just knew it. I mm-hmm. knew he was going to hit Undertaker. And I knew he was going to... Like, what I thought might happen is that Shawn would disqualify, like, call the match because Mm -hmm. there's chairs there's spit there's Mm -hmm. tomfoolery abound like no he is forced to call the match and literally like brett after spitting in Shawn michaels face Shawn retaliating with a chair shot brett's like i better get this pin i better get this opportunistic pin and pins him and Shawn and it's just like get over here and and count this out this is your job Mm -hmm. You've been telling me this whole night. I've been testing your boundary. You've been getting in my face telling me you're the law. I have to do what you say. Blah, blah, blah. All right, we'll get over here and do your job. Mm -hmm. Oh, so crazy. How dare you take the belt from The Undertaker? But it's so so good. good. And I'm so... Like, they did it so well because The Undertaker launches Brett out of the sharpshooter. Mm -hmm. Like, out of the ring. Like, he can't even get, like, the assisted sharpshooter off the ring post like he can't get him at all superplex off the top doesn't matter chair shot doesn't matter and it takes sean michael with a chair shot who Mm -hmm. also then has to count Mm -hmm. i'm gonna die it's (laughs) so good it's so good i love this pay-per-view it's and brett just grabs the belt and is like me and they are throwing shit at him cups popcorn Mm -hmm. food signs they are just pummeling him with crap because everyone is enraged Mm -hmm. i i didn't even know because i was like because at one point all three of them were in the ring and i was like hold on these aren't my three favorite people just here in the ring love Mm -hmm. that for me and i love brett and i know if you guys are not new to the show you know i've been like on this weird like I don't know what's happening to Brad. I feel bad for him. Like, come back. Like, what's going on? So I just, I don't know. But I did have a moment where I realized, like, he's going to have to be the belt holder at some point this year because he ends up having to lose the belt for the Montreal screw job. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I knew at some point he was going to hold the belt again. I just didn't know it would be today. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> I don't know what to do. Uh, so Kelsey needs time to recover. Yeah. Uh, but that has been another edition of the New to Wrestling podcast. Thank you, as always, for 
watching, listening, subscribing, commenting, all those good things wherever you find us. We will catch you on the next one. We'll see you there. Bye. Bye. Hey. <laughs> yeah. You just be like, hey. Hey. This is my body of work. Do you and like my, my body? Where's? <laughs> <laughs> Because guess what? I'm peddling them. <laughs>